What's up YouTube? Welcome to another series here. I've got the London system for you guys. This is an opening that's special to me. I think it's a big reason why I became a grandmaster. Uh, I think I'm very good at the opening and I've got some tips and tricks that I'm hoping to teach you guys along the way here as we start at 800 ELO and work our way up. I will only be able to include the games with the white pieces, of course, but I decided to run this uh, series idea anyway, so if you see some jumps in rating, that's probably why. Enjoy the series! Let's start with the London. Bishop here, we usually go c4. Yeah, if I see knight c6 or bishop here, or even bishop here, it means eventually I'm probably playing c4 and not c3. It's a general rule. But if I ever see my d-pawn attacked, it's c3 immediately. And yeah, if I see this, I know the bishop's not coming out. Um, I'm almost, almost always playing uh, c3 in these cases, but I may as well start with my knights, and what do I always do? I do this knight first, why? Because this queen still covers that square. Many times in this uh, series, people have played knight to h5 and uh, hung their knight there, so I just like leaving that sense of protection there for at least one extra move. I do not care about doubling my pawns here. And the way I'm getting my pieces out is so that if he had played knight c6 here, we would have been back in the main line and I would have played bishop g3. So the way I'm developing my pieces is so that in case we transpose, I'm, I'm doing everything right. Uh, but he played queen c7, so I'm gonna take, I'm gonna play knight e5, and I'm gonna play f4. This is uh, the line that I like to do against uh, against this opening. I think it works well. You know, they go like, they bring their knight somewhere to attack you. You put this down their throat, now they can't ever take you. If they take on uh, d4, you always capture with the e pawn. And most importantly in this line, most importantly, guard that square. It will piss the hell out of your opponent. Um, so if they get to play knight here, they're gonna be very happy. Like b6, castle, bishop there, if I just do some random move, knight e4. And if I take, the pawn goes there, they can support with f5, bring the other knight in, whatever. Just do not let them uh, play knight here and you'll have a good life. Let's guard our, uh, our pawn here. When we're this deep into the opening, I prefer to guard my pawn with the rook than trade queens here because at this point, now I'm ready to use my queen aggressively. His bishop can't develop. He might even go queen a5, b6, and trap his queen. Good chances, good chances. Because at this point, he's realizing his bishop can't get out. He doesn't want to take this. So he's probably thinking, okay, I gotta play b6. Well, you know, I gotta get my queen out of the way. Oh, well, let me gain some time attacking this pawn. I could see it happening. A5 is an incredibly non-threatening move. That does a whole bunch of nothing. So, I could either play A4, which looks like a nice... A nice way to um, just neutralize everything there. Or I could let him play a4, but specifically I don't want to let him play a3. You almost never want to let a pawn get here in the London, because it undermines this, which undermines this, which undermines this. So you never let a pawn get to a3. So I either let him play that and play a3, okay, pretty good. Or I just play a4 and it doesn't look like he can do that much. Um, I'm going to castle and say, go ahead. I still think, by the way, that he could trap his queen like this. Okay, so he's going to go here. A much better move. However, at this point, I think... Uh, I think the rook lift is going to be... Well, should be pretty annoying. He's not getting a knight in here. I'm getting a rook over to h3. This has got to be too much. Because he might even go here to try to trade this bishop off. Maybe not appreciating some sacrifices. Okay. Um, 
Queen h4 looks like a nice way to increase the pressure, but another move I really like is just Queen e2. It stops Bishop a6, so I don't trade my light square bishop, and it covers this square. Again, if he plays this move, he's not getting he's not getting anything in there. Knight h5. Well, that looks like a, a, a gosh darn sacrifice if I've ever seen one. <laughs> <laughs> how do I not take that, is their question. How do I resist? Takes, takes, takes. I mean, he can go f5 there. It's not, uh, not very convincing. If I sack the bishop and take, I'm not sure that that actually... Does that actually do anything for me? I mean, I'm obviously gonna do it. But <laughs> I'm obviously doing it. Don't get me wrong. But... <laughs> oh, Salty's here. Oh, no. okay, now I have to. Oh my... Salty's here, it's over. We're forced to do it. Oh, well, that's that's uh, that's one way to do it. Oh, he's not gonna take it, so he respects me. This is good. I wasn't as confident as he was. Okay, I'm thinking queen takes, and I'm trying to reckon with knight f6 here at the moment, which is a Disturbing type of move. Because then I can go queen g5, king h7, but I'm just one move too slow getting my rook up in there. What to do? I think we just come back, honestly. I think just bishop back to d3. Well, the thing is, if I had brought my rook over before sacking, um, it didn't look that promising. Because then my opponent would just play f5. And I'm not sold there. This, however... I'm not sure if this is going to work out for him. Let's go queen e3 question mark. Okay. Put the knight in and see what happens next. Okay. Did not want to see that really. Uh, rookie one though, after queen f5, I presume. <laughs> Position still looks pretty good. I think he'll play this. I think we want to keep the queens on the board, so I'm going to go here. Hmm. Probably pre move this. We need to get some pre moves in. We'll stop that. But it's going to be a little tough here because. Uh, can't possibly predict all his moves, I think. Queen h3. I think I need to trade one pair of rooks. I have a chance in an endgame here. It's unfortunate. That's unfortunate! Oh man, this is what happens when Salty's in the chat, Kappa. Yeah, Rook H5 was just no good. Um, but the the reason that you don't want to do this is... I'm not really sold on this. I still think this is the way I would have uh, normally continued, maybe, but... 
I wasn't too sure about this. F5, and you know, if the knight comes back to F6 and goes there, who knows? Uh, but maybe if I took, I should have uh, just taken back and calmly brought the attack together instead of uh, instead of bishop f7. Honestly, my, my opponent played really well after that. Got to hand it to him. King g7 and like um, even queen g like queen g5 and recognition to bishop a6. I thought he played like really great. This is good stuff from Black. I would still expect to have a good chance here, but. Rook a7 to g7 and queen h3 and rook f4 to h4. I'm gonna hand out some uh, some coupons here to this guy. That was that was very sweet. Um, this was like <laughs> complete textbook, <laughs> complete textbook by White into uh, a very unnecessary move. Very unnecessary move. Uh, no, unfortunately f6 didn't blunder 96 check because. Um, the queen was there, but maybe I had some... No, I I don't think so. I don't think there was anything missed. Because there's a queen on g4, right? Um, so he defended really well. Up till here, though, black has like two pieces developed, and it looks like, really, really rough. Um, so this was looking great, but yeah, after this, I think maybe rook f1, or potentially takes and just take back is like the... You know, yeah, this this happens, but I think we can put up with this. Even playing down the exchange, taking, just, you know, putting knight on e5 or something, I think that looks pretty good too. He defended really well after that. <laughs> yeah, we... Well, the problem is after we sacked, we didn't really have anything, so <laughs> of course I'm sitting here and you know, spend a minute and a half there. And there isn't there isn't really anything here, so it was kind of a sack first, think later, and <laughs> there was that. I don't think there's anything to be found. That's the problem. What happened in the opening? Oh yeah, yeah. So this was all really good. I mean, losing that game is unfortunate because it's such a textbook uh, good position for White, and um, <laughs> and then to, to play Rook H5 and uh, and go into that it's a little unnecessary. That's all. So unfortunately, we don't get a great learning experience. We get a, uh, and that position was good, just play it better than me. <laughs> so there you go. That's what you get. Let's get back on track. Maybe. Oh, okay, he's d5 guy. Are we gonna see the bishop come out? Remember, when the c-pawn goes up, then it's time for c3. In the London, we always capture this way. And most of the time when I see that bishop go out, it is time to attack that pawn. I'm happy if he takes me and opens up the A file. I'm just as happy to take this. Um, take this queen here. Hey, OG, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can um, we can take or we can just develop around it. At some point, he'll probably need to probably need to take me or. Um, or maybe we want to take uh, play against the double pawns. Let us see. I'm gonna I'm gonna wait it out here. I'm gonna wait it out. Yeah. Okay. I, <laughs> I'm definitely gonna need an explanation for that move. Uh, not only does it not threaten my pawn, but I was actually going to move my pawn anyway. B4 and B5 is a a very uh, strong idea. So those were going to be my next two moves all the same. Now there's just this funny looking bishop there. Um, bishop B5 check looks reasonably disturbing for him. Because he can't even take it. And king e7, obviously, just blocks everything. Knight there runs into knight e5. So everything looks uh, looks annoying for him here. So we definitely want some material there. Not too shabby. Let's 
Let's cover the c6 square. And yeah, we'll play rook a1 next. Thanks, Jet Funk. 23 months. Appreciate it, buddy. Okay, well, knight takes, bishop takes bishop would be uh would be nice. And if bishop takes here, knight takes, the knight also hangs. So I think this might work because rook e8, bishop c7. Also hits the d8 knight, which is now pinned to the e8 rook. So I think this should win material. Yeah, anytime someone puts a loose bishop there with uh, with your bishop on f4, you want to uh, you want to harass it. Look for those tactics where the knight jumps out of the way. And it's important we went knight d7 and not, you know, knight g6 takes their rook e8, because then bishop c7, knight c6, and the rook's protected. But by forcing the knight to move, it means after rook e8, bishop c7, that the knight on d8 is attacked, and the rook on e8 is undefended and pinned, so. This all stemmed from his move bishop here. Bishop c2 was like, attack nothing and even forced me to, or reminded me to do a very good plan that I was probably gonna do anyway. Okay, this looks like it doesn't affect things. Let's uh, double up the rooks here. Why not bishop b7 straight away? Bishop b7 straight away. I'm not following, chief. Bishop c7 straight away. How am I doing bishop c7 straight away? Here, you mean. The bishop c7, I'm not threatening anything. Right? It's defended. I want to play bishop c7 when I'm actually threatening something. If I go here and I'm not actually threatening anything, I'm going to be no better than my opponent who played bishop here and was also threatening nothing. Bishop. Hmm, I wonder. Might be time to just take this. I'd like to box the king in and go for a checkmate idea. King hides nicely on h2. Dark square, which is the best place to be against the light squared bishop. Trying to get a checkmate here. I'm trying to make it happen. King here, bishop d8 check. Here he's gonna go back in there. Start with this. So h4, h5. 
Knight check, king here. I think that might be the way. We really want the knight on g6. That's what we want. Once the knight goes here, we should be good. F3 is probably the last finishing touch that's needed because this knight is covering that square and after g6, that square is needed to mate. Literally force mate. Yes. Now it's actually true. It's literally force mate. Take a while to force it, but I'm sure it's force mate here. But it could be force mating too. Depends what he does. That looks like one of the better moves. Bishop here and Rook there. Coming up. One last move to play. And GG. The Talvez. A great, a great little uh, Spanish phrase for you. I mean, a phrase, really. Laterally force me. I like that. Laterally force me. Well, this came down to bishop c2 not being good. So there's a reason why it looks tempting to give him isolated pawns, doubled isolated pawns. But I very much like taking and having my pawns doubled so I can play b4, b5. b4, b5 is a very unstoppable kind of threat he should just be going here and castling i was going to do the same and just hoping that he eventually does that the thing is even if he does this and then takes you know there's no b5 move right now because it's not pinned anymore but it doesn't matter it's still very good for me i'm gonna go knight b3 knight c5 and sink that knight into a great square he can't really play b6 because the a pawn always falls so he's in an uncomfortable position as well That was the, the NFL thing, right? I thought it was pretty cool. Okay. The Germans uh, tend to have pretty strong theory. Uh, I'm curious what the Germans are coming with here. At this point, Bishop D6, I'll definitely be taking it. And if knight c6, I think I'll go queen e2 and stop e5. Even if you castle there, it should still be, uh, be pretty good. But I just want to make sure that I get my knight e5 here. Knight d2, okay, well that's a pretty elementary blunder. The Germans have theory, but they, uh, I guess they can still blunder like this. Uncharacteristic. Bring the rest of the, the army in. Bring the rest of the Ladskis in. No dang pawn, I will not be playing the Olympiad. Actually, my next tournament that I'm playing uh, overlaps that tournament, so there's an easy reason. Don't miss this. Probably like F4 and maybe think about a rook lift. Mm 
Mm. This trades the bishop off, but I'm not sure that's I'm not sure that's the best. Drops a pawn, although simplifications are always nice. I think uh, I think this move is actually going to be going to be the easiest. I'll probably take here and then just bring the bishop back to d3. It's okay, Bunglet. You only have to like 50% of the stream. If it's me streaming the London and you don't like the London, you know, at least go to bat for me. Okay. Let's bring the bishop back. Uh, very good diagonal here. A little uh, beat bra. Some, uh, some tempting options for sure. <laughs> of course we gotta make sure we don't get mated. Knight takes f7 is of course the one to calculate. Pawn takes e6 because I don't think queen takes leads anywhere. Pawn takes king e7, rook f7, king e8. I mean, it's good because I can just take the bishop, but I, I was looking for force mate. Don't really see it. It's definitely the right move. Um, plus, if he goes to g8, then he'll be in trouble after e6. It's a tough move to meet for him. Some very chill uh, music vibes today. King here, I think e7 does the trick. We're still covering mate. So he can sack the queen here, but I mean, I have rook f8 and pawn takes coming in, so it's just not in time. This is the move that I would have played. I were him, so I like it. This is mate, so we can't really take it. And after taking here, king takes, we still can't take it. So it is a um, it's a very good try. I would expect it to work if I was playing with black. <laughs> so here I think uh, the easiest is just to you know, take this rook. If I give a check, king takes e7. Not 100% uh, convinced that that we're getting what we want out of that. We can't do this. So, I think the decision is made for us. G4. 
Check. So here, if he goes to one of these squares, I take that. Also, I can give this check. I think I want to uh, do an oil check first and see what he's going to do because yeah, these moves will lose on the spot. So, okay. Good stuff, good stuff. I'm going to try to make it work though. Check. We have queen here. And he goes there, we can just take this. It'll be with a check. So king d8 looks most likely. And then we'll go here, uh, rook takes. So a few different moves here. Queen d8 and rook c1 I think is the simplest. Should be leading to mate. GG. Hello to Nitsud Prime. 85 months. He's already at seven years. He's going for more. Been around since the beginning. Dustin, you're a big ding guy, eh? Big ding. I think it's more important, uh, Modro 06, that it's like, you know, in a position where I'm up a rook, if you say, hey, why didn't you do this? I mean, you might be right. Maybe your move is good too. But unless the move I make is a blunder, those aren't the moments to be critical or to like, hey, well, what about this instead? If I'm doing something that wins 100% and you're doing something that wins 100%, both are fine. Right? The positions you want to actually work on your calculation are the ones where you need to find one move and one move only, or else you lose, or the result changes, or the ones where you know doing something gives you a plus one advantage and doing something else gives you a plus 10 advantage. But if you're talking about an advantage of plus five, plus six, plus seven, plus eight, plus nine, plus 10, all of those are completely winning, and it's just whatever one suits you, or whichever one you see first. So, yeah, asking me why I didn't do something when I'm up a rook is like, okay, I mean, literally any move at some point, I could just like make a random pawn move and I'd still be winning. So, it, <laughs> hey, why didn't you do this? Well, it just doesn't matter, that's why. So, save your, uh, your calculation skills, save your brain. Don't, don't waste uh, time worrying about those. If you see something good, it doesn't matter if it's the best thing. If it wins and you know it wins, then go for it. Okay. Let's win a nice game for a big dust here. I wonder if he's a, if he's a C6 kind of guy or yeah, I see it seemed like he was a bishop there kind of guy. That was what I was uh, getting from the guy. Let's uh, trade these. I'll play this way for now. I had a tournament game recently that was uh, very similar. Where you just trade and... Okay, let's... A little tickle tickle. Still got this bishop for now. Uh, 
I'll just go for a nice little uh, simple move like h3. Not quite, no, there's knight c6, so this check didn't, didn't win something earlier. And yeah, in positions like this, I think generally you wanna smack this queen down here. Knight d5 is definitely an idea. That reason, c4 looks tempting. And can back up these pawns with the rooks. The knights are controlled because of the, the pawns here. Maybe queen e7, c5, and bishop d6. Okay. Curious here. If I attack, are we really going knight there? I don't know. Okay. Oh, I really want to get the knight in here. So let's start with something like this. And I, I want to get the knight in there. Long term, I'm thinking of some idea where I'm like hitting the knight and also hitting uh, f7. Looks like a good move by him. Um, I really don't want to trade queens, honestly, but um, I think I have to. So this move looks to be quite strong. Yeah. No matter where I go, there's a knight here. The only way to try to keep the queens is go here, but losing this pawn is uh, fairly catastrophic. So we'll take it and bring our knight in. Eat to exchange queens when you don't want to. D5 uh, looks good next. Yeah, I think D5. Nah, actually D5 loses a pawn. Not a great pawn to lose either. We're gonna have to invent something. I'm not sure what. Maybe this? How crazy is that? Looks, unfortunately it looks a little crazy. Takes, takes. It's really a question of what move do I think that he's gonna spot? Because I, I think he'll probably spot um, a good way to handle that. And I think rook c2 is just good enough. And then bring the other rook over. Because if you bring this rook over to the d file, I'm going to have some knight c6. So, no, I don't think we can... Uh, I don't think we can venture into that, that stuff. So let's go here. Do I have any losses on this account yet? I have tons of losses. It's like... The thing about me when I do these... Uh, when I do these things is I'm... I don't know. I don't really have a, an ego about trying to keep the uh, the account pristine. So <laughs> I definitely have some losses. I still troll around and try to get fun checkmates and use a lot of my time. So it's not really like some speed run where I'm keeping track of the wins and I really, I really want to uh, really want to, you know, have like 150 wins or 200 wins with no losses or anything. So We've definitely lost a, quite a few games and drawn a bunch of games. Even today, I think we drew lost um, uh, two games. So even just today, the answer is no. this yeah Elias's elegant command is hilarious I find it very funny coacher thanks for the $20 it's your birthday as well coacher you know how many birthdays there are we got bunglet's birthday skag's birthday 
Culture 22 is your birthday as well. It's Chess's birthday today. Happy birthday to Chess. A lot of birthdays. Thanks for the twenty dollars. Coach or twenty-two. HBD, buddy. Clancy, Clancy. Thanks for the nineteen months. Dropping your prime and going back to YouTube. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. You're excused. Try to get on this uh, juicy-looking square. I share some uh, some interesting birthdays as well. I think I have uh, Carson Wentz, LeBron James, Tiger Woods, some real heavy hitters. He almost can't move. King G8 will probably shuffle once and then go rook here. Rook is so passive for uh, for black here. Cancel these pre moves. Unfortunate. That's the one thing. Once you commit all those pre moves, you can't edit them. <laughs> There's no uh, edit function. Okay, we're going to have to cancel. Cancel and redo. You just don't want a stalemate at the end. All right. We've had this a few times in, uh, in this. Uh, particular series so you guys get to learn how to handle d4 e5 at least the way that i like to handle it wow that is a bold bold move
I mean, gotta just toss this uh, this knight in here, I guess. Like, what else? What else do you do? Queen e8. Sort of eyeballing knight f6. Here, I'm looking at knight h7. Also, just queen h3 straight up. Knight h7 is going to get into some murky waters with knight takes e5, I think. Queen h3, h6. I don't really see anything there. H7, I think almost gotta just go for it out of respect. Knight takes, let's say takes, takes. Queen there. There's gonna be a d5 move that kinda hits like a truck. D5 is going to be strong. Very strong. I don't really like dealing with uh, with that, honestly. think of a super clean way to do it. So, what does that mean? Just make a random move? Just go. Really wanted to play knight h7. Many moves I wanted to do here. <laughs> they just weren't happening. Yeah, d6 looks, uh, looks like quite a reasonable one. So bring the king out of the middle. It almost looks like it's time for this, and then this, and then this. That's what it feels like. Because the king has to go in the corner, so like, Bishop f7 and then queen takes g6. Should be enough. That's made in one. And if queen g8, queen h5 is made in two. And bishop. F5, um, I can take here, maybe knight h6 or something. Up the rook should do the trick. 
most times. Well, it didn't look very appealing to go to h6 with the king, right? My bishop's on d2, like, generally going up the board with your king as opposed to going down the board is not going to be a good thing. Attack the knight. Let's see where he wants to go. Let's get an escape square and then we can bring the the homies in. And this one is particularly unfortunate. GG. Don't draw again, I know. Learned my lesson, I guess. Too many draws in one session. Okay, let's go. Yeah, a bit of a lost streak is right. Okay, here we are. What's it gonna be from him? I like to go 92 to cover that square. Okay. Yeah, he's pretty steadfast. He's uh He's he's got a plan and he's sticking to it. Let's go 95. Interesting move. Normally not a great move. So I always like getting a queen on f3 in these positions. Yeah, sometimes people play b4 and you can kind of get them with that knight takes c4 trick with the bishop loose. But queen here also has the idea to go to h3 and it also supports e4. So I like queen f3 in these cases where this move comes in. Yeah, and then this happens, which is generally a blunder. Um, knight takes f7, rook takes, bishop takes. Here I need to do some extra work because knight to e4 can be played. And... Then queen h3, knight takes bishop. I actually don't really like it for me. It's probably playable, but... Uh, looks kind of gross. So maybe knight takes f7 doesn't work here, which is a bit unfortunate. But a4 definitely gets ready for this. Ugh, I mean, he's, he's really asking for it here. 
Uh, okay, well, C4 is just hanging, so I think that should probably be the play. But yeah, I'm really looking at this. Knight c6 and bishop d6 is another one that I want to play. Takes, I guess, uh, maybe pawn takes even. b3, knight c6 looks very good. Queen there takes, takes, okay, yeah, so he's gonna grab this first. Probably needs to be pawn takes. Don't think my queen gets trapped in here. a7 if that and then my queen escapes this way that move looks a bit odd oh we're gonna go raw no calculation a5 here just feels like the move here too. That's maybe a nice bait. Here, kind of maybe baits this move. Ooh, 95. Wow. Not really uh, predicting any of the moves from my opponent. Interesting. Knight d5. Let's attack. Still, we always have this if he goes there, so I'm. That's why I'm not really concerned about rook b8 in general. What? These moves the, that I'm being hit with here are quite something, I tell you. threats here so we'll probably just motor that up the board yeah I think we'll be able to uh, convert this one we got the queen and this guy's just going Is a check so there's no time for that and that's a check but then there would be a back rank mate gg grape nose boy thanks for the seven month reset hello hello okay when they play g6 i usually go for a quick uh h3 when they go here i usually uh, 
What do I usually do? H4. Well, de definitely what I'm looking for here is uh, checkmate, right? Like I want to mate the guy. So bishop e2 is a little obvious for bishop h5 mate. So I'm looking for something a little more subtle, right? Bishop e2, I feel is a little it's too obvious. Um, I am J guard exclamation mark upcoming. You like that one salty? I like the sound of that. I didn't even think of it. I was thinking about G4 knight takes bishop here G5 queen takes G4. But I like I like I like that from Salty. That's uh very tricky from the guy. Maybe even pre-move this so it looks like a mistake. <laughs> Wait, this guy's amazing. Oh, how did he know this? Okay. It didn't work, and now I think we're gonna lose our queen. But that's okay. I think it's you know, bishop here, g4, queen f4, you know, knight h5. This is a rite of passage to lose your queen, thanks to Salty. here make the best of it bishop e5 it is key 533 sack first think later so he sacks and then i think later that's how it works Something, something. <laughs> What's going on here, my guy? What is he doing? Uh oh. Well, this this doesn't look good for him now. Great to see you moving in, pal. Yeah, I'm just moving some stuff around. Is there a mate here? Nice mate? I don't think so. I think we gotta take the queen. Yeah. Doing this. They are working, Key, but this is normal. For, uh... <laughs> this is normal for that to happen. Check. We can hope that he takes. He does not. Of course. Why would he take? Why would he take and make things easy for me? If he took, then queen g6 was going to be mate in a couple moves. But alas, we have to work a little bit harder than that. Yes, it's okay, Antique Tesla. I'm still in my chair. Like I've still got it under me here. We're grounded, so we're safe for the moment. Is 
his king can almost be like smothered by a knight in a in a funny way here. Rook there looks uh, tempting and good. This isn't going to be very fun to play. I think it's just going to be boring and winning. this if uh, knight takes here. Well, actually, we have queen d4. The old queen for knight. I think we'll manage. Jack. 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 He could go here, yeah. But if he goes here, of course, knight f6. This makes more sense, though. Check. Okay, that'll be enough. Where are these guys in your pool? Hey, they're in the same pool, man. The difference is you're not playing like I'm playing. You're playing the way you're playing. So these guys are in your pool. They're just beating you. <laughs> Thank you for making it to the end of today's episode of the London System series. If you enjoyed it, leave a comment below and like the video. And don't forget to subscribe right there and turn post notifications on so you never miss the next video. Speaking of next video, if you want more of the London System series, click right there.